All right. So would you like to introduce yourself and uh, what you do uh, about maybe perhaps about your wonderful media company and uh, where you're based and if you like a little bit about yourself and your work? Okay. Yeah. My name is Marco Rer. I'm a Finnish filmmaker. Uh, been actually a filmmaker all my life. I started already uh, when I was a teenager. I decided to become a filmmaker and uh, one of the reasons was that I, I was obsessed to diving already when I was a small boy. I started when I was nine years old and um, that was the time of Jacques Cousteau, the, the famous French a diver and a filmmaker so of course he was my hero and I decided to try to live my life the same way as, as Jacques you know to to do something I love and something that I can connect with uh, water and diving and uh, that's how I became a filmmaker uh, of course my company MRP uh, I based it I studied it already on 1990 after I had worked as a producer for, for several feature films already at the age of, uh, what, 29. And um, the company, of course, mainly works on feature films. We've done, so far, we've produced 50 feature films. Mm -hmm. We've done a lot of documentaries, TV films, TV series, TV programs, hundreds, hundreds of those. And um, nowadays, or today, we only do um, films for cinema. Short movies, even those go to cinema. Documentaries for cinema and feature films. Feature films is about 80% of the company. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is my background. So I'm, I'm a passionate filmmaker and, uh, and uh, of course, uh, even, almost even more passionate diver. Oh, well, it's, it's an honor to speak with you. Thank you for that. Um, so this is what you're obviously most passionate about. Um, can you talk just a little bit about Tale of the Lake? I'm curious, how did it come about? I know it is a sequel or follow on to Tale of the Forest. Um, can you talk a little bit about how the idea started or uh, how that originated? And, um, and, and what other factors or influences are, are part of that? Yeah, we, we, actually, I, I founded my um, underwater film team in uh, 1991. Since that, we've been making uh, films, underwater films, documentaries in the Arctic area. For years, we, we were filming in, uh, for example, Iceland, Greenland, the waters, uh, White Sea in Russia. We did one movie in Hudson Bay, in Arctic Canada. And uh, always I was planning or had in my mind the idea of making a movie about the Finnish lakes. You know, we have almost 200,000 lakes in Finland. Very beautiful lake nature and uh, just never, I had never had a, a chance to really concentrate on that. 1995, 96, I made a big uh, TV series on the shipwrecks in the Baltic Sea and, and in Finland. And I shot one episode in, in the lake, in the lakes, yeah, in a couple of the biggest lakes. There are beautiful shipwrecks in, in, on those lakes as well. And already then I, I wrote on my notebook that uh, I should make a movie about the nature the unique nature of the Finnish lakes. So the idea came up to me almost 25 years ago. So it was a long, long process in that sense. But uh, when uh, Tale of a Forest, which premiered, I think, 2014, no, 2012, it became a huge success in the cinemas, broke a lot of records. Then we, I thought that, okay, now it's the right time to uh, you know, fulfill this dream and, and start making uh, Tale of a Lake. And uh, it was a long project because we, we were shooting during three years. We had altogether eight mini teams, mini units 
filming it, the main unit, which was me and the uh, DOP, Teemu Liekka, and the underwater unit, we worked during those three years, I think we had about 150 shooting days ourselves. Nice. Over, yeah, 700 hours of material and uh, cool. really, they're, they're very long projects and uh, you need, need all the seasons, of course, and not, you can't finish this kind of a movie in one year or even two years. Three years is the minimum and, and uh, I think we were lucky that we finally managed to get practically no, almost everything we were hoping for and, 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 and planned for and, and some, something else, some, something that we didn't even know about or dream about then on, on the way. Oh, well, that's wonderful. It sounds as if it all came together at exactly the right time. Yeah, of course, as we all know that the climate change is affecting especially the winters in the, in the Arctic areas. So we, had, uh, we were a little bit worrying about how the winters will be because snow and ice is such a vital element of the Finnish nature and, and the Finnish lakes. But um, at the same time, we were extremely lucky that, uh, that we got something really unique like uh, a seal pup, not the normal seal because there's um, one of the, the rarest animals in this, on this planet is the Saima ring seal. There's only 340 left the whole planet. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was kind of an impossible dream to, to shoot a, a, a Saima ring seal pup when it's coming out of the, the uh, snowy nest. Mm -hmm. First of all, the, they are difficulties to nest if there's not enough snow and uh, hard to find a place where there is a nest and that the pup stays alive because only about 40 every year survive. And be there at the right time to be able to, to film it was, was one of the, the most uh, incredible moments during the, the filming. It certainly sounds so. Um, that's, that's amazing. Um, can you talk just for a moment about how you, um, and I haven't seen the film yet, I've just seen your beautiful trailer. Uh, yeah. and, and also all of your other lovely um, videos that are on the Vimeo, your Vimeo channel. Right. And all the magnificent work that you do in these extreme conditions. Uh, I, I'm, um, I, can't, I can't fathom the amount of technical knowledge you have amassed to successfully be able to, um, to produce these things under such conditions. But, but bef before, perhaps you'll talk about that in a moment, but before we do, I would like to ask you, how did you come about to bring in this uh, cultural fascination uh, with mythology and the ancient symbols of, of animals and that what they bring to culture? Yeah, okay, when you, when you, you're a filmmaker like I am. You want to tell stories. Right. And you, that's, that's what, what the films are. They are stories. And my idea for this movie, exactly like, like some of my previous movies, Underwater Iceland, and um, which have actually told about the, the relationship and the cultural relationship of, of humans and the nature. Oh, so, wonderful. Yeah, and, and in this movie, I didn't want to have a humans. I didn't want to show humans. In a way, we tell about nature as it is, as it should be without the humans. But at the same time, I, I wanted to tell human stories. So the way we designed the script together with author Antti Turi was that we, we studied the Finnish mythology. We wanted to find a story that, that could uh, be at the same time universal. A Finnish story, mythological story, but universal. And we found this story, uh, which is about uh, the, the daughter of the god and the goddess of water in the Finnish mythology. Uh -huh. The god of the waters is, is Ahti, and his wife is Bellamo, and their children, especially daughters, are water spirits that in the old mythology, were like a symbol for 
our relationship to the water. And they also are kind of guardians of the waters. They have to look, take care that everything go, goes according as it should in the nature. So this was like the, the basic story for the, for the movie. But at the same time, we wanted to tell about, uh, because Finnish mythology is extremely rich. For example, Tolkien, when he started to write uh, Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. he based a lot of, of the things in the Finnish mythology, the Finnish Kalevala, the national poem poetry and even the language he kind of used the Finnish, Finnish uh, language as a basis for the Hobbit language so we wanted to tell about the beliefs some of the the most important mythological beliefs of of the Finnish ancient Finns mm -hmm. and um, I think they serve as as a as a good example how the humans lived in harmony with the nature, in balance with the nature. Because most of the things they, these myths and, and, and the old stories tell, teach the people in the right way because they are not teaching the way we, we are used to that sit down and I tell you what to do. <laughs> but they, they were kind of um, symbolic stories and uh, advising the humans, you know, the people to behave in the right way, never to fish a lake empty and appreciate the nature, to live in harmony with the nature. But I thought this is a wonderful basis for, for, uh, for a movie. And uh, at the same time, we can find funny and, and interesting stories how, what, what our ancestors were thinking about different animals and, and why is there winter, why does the snow land and, and it's, it's kind of a, a nice way to tell stories. I like it. Very nice. It's very nice. May I ask you a little bit about uh, maybe perhaps what changes you have seen or observed in your work during your lifetime um, that, you know, with regard, say, to um, human impact on the planet and conservational, environmental conservation changes. Do you have anything you would like to say about that? Yeah, of course, during the, I started to die 46 years ago. And uh, in some of the places I've been diving since that every year. So, and I've, I've seen a lot of things change. The good thing is that uh, certain things are, are changing better because of the, the in, in environmental awareness that people have started to understand that what we do affects the nature. But of course, at the same time, the climate change has affected a lot of things because we have shorter winters and uh, the change is obvious. We, we, that's, that's for sure that, that we are affecting the, the whole climate. But the, the good thing is that we, there, there's also things we can do to improve the nature. For example, the Baltic Sea has been in a very, very bad shape, especially the 80s, 90s, and even 10 years ago, it was in worse situation than now because a lot of money has been raised, a lot of issues, a lot of, of, of environmental changes or, or changes have been, been done, keeping in mind the environmental effects. And we've seen that, for example, the sea eagle that was almost disappeared from the Baltic Sea has now come back and, and, and is healthy. And, and there's, a, there's a good amount of, of sea eagles. Also the, uh, the gray seal in, in, uh, in the Baltic Sea, which, was all, which almost disappeared. It's now quite numerous, almost too numerous for <laughs> the fishermen. So yeah. I, I think there are both positive things, of course, mainly negative that we see that we affect the nature, we harm the nature. But the good thing is that we can see that if we work and fight for the nature, we can also do good things and we can see the results. And that's, that's the positive thing. I, I think my job as a filmmaker is to show the beauty of the nature so that the, the people, they get the, like an emotional uh, connection to nature. They see the beauty and they kind of feel strongly 
then they can act. If I go and tell that you have to do like that, I'm not, I'm not trying to teach anyone. I'm just trying to, to show the beauty and make them understand that by, by holding the, the balance and, and doing the right things and, and not destroying everything, not putting everything, not every lake uh, for commercial use or, or build factories around them. We, we, we still have at least certain parts of the country and the nature left for the, for the future generations. Thank you. Um, I, I'd like to ask you another question, and that is, what do you see for the future um, from your rich experiences and your life work? Uh, you have a very unique perspective and uh, I'm sure tremendous insight into what you do and where you work. Can you talk a little bit about what you see for the future? Well, I'm quite optimistic. Uh, I think we are clever, we humans. Right. <laughs> we have better education than earlier. We understand the results of what we do. And uh, I think a lot of, the majority of people want to take care of the, the nature, want to, the, the future generations to enjoy it and have a better world than, than what we have. I think that's, that's uh, something we have at the moment, that we have a chance to affect things and, and we have technology to take care of, of pollution. We have technology to take care of waste and, and there's a lot of things we can affect and make, make uh, less uh, damage than 60s, 70s, 80s. But at the same time, I, I've realized that people somehow, uh, because maybe the digital era, living in, in the world where they, they feel like that it, it, it's all in, in, uh, in the internet, it's all in, in the digital world that, that they are disconnected from the nature. And, and for some, some people, it's, it's hard to uh, understand that we actually, we're still living on this planet and, and it's a physical planet and we have to take care of it. And, but in, in general, I believe that, that we have no more knowledge. We have better ways to, to uh, communicate and, and, and uh, also we can share the knowledge and, and do things to make things better and, and, and save the planet. Well, very good. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else you would like to add? I don't know. Well, just, uh, of course, uh, I, I would love the audience to enjoy the movie. And uh, maybe I'm sure they will see something that in the real life they would never have a chance to see. I, I, we've got in places and we've shot phenomenas that hardly anyone has ever seen. There are certain things that nobody had ever seen. Spawning of the, the uh, freshwater uh, uh, salmon, for example. Not even the scientists had seen the spawning before this. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or many things. But the most important is, is the, the beauty of the nature and the hopefully the feeling that, that, that we are part of it. And, and it's worth being there, spending time there. And, and of course, Finland is not far away in this modern world. <laughs> so whoever falls in love with the, with the lakes and the countries, so are you welcome to see them in real life? They are even more beautiful. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for all of your work and your, the beauty that you're bringing to, to millions. And um, uh, we're going to really be rooting for an excellent screening and a packed house, and if we can, even additional screenings to the schedule. So Great. Thank, thank you again for your time and your generosity, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Betsy. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Take care.